The latest volume of the One Piece magazine just dropped, and when I say it is spicy, you better believe it. Spicy like hot wings, or in this case, the Pirate King's wings. In fact, that is the title of this magazine. One Piece magazine special feature, the wings, Zoro and Sanji. And all of this special bonus material has me believing that Oda is the biggest fangirl when it comes to shipping the straw hat swordsman and chef. Hello my Nakamotachi, this is Joy Girl, and for those of you who don't know, the One Piece magazine is a special bonus publication series that started in 2017. Each magazine volume contains extra behind the scenes type information and lots of bonus material. For example, the first three volumes of the One Piece magazine contain the special episodes Loof, basically a what if type series centering on the idea of what if Sabo saved Luffy and Ace at Marineford. Whereas for the latest volume 18, Oda decided to go all in on Zoro and Sanji and it is delightful. In fact, it's quite a groundbreaking volume because it's the first time that Oda broke away from his naming convention for these magazine series, giving this volume a special title in honor of the duo, One Piece magazine special feature, The Wings, Zoro and Sanji. And it's also the first time that Luffy isn't on the cover of the magazine. Now I won't go through or I can't go through everything that's included in this magazine volume because for one the magazine is 180 pages long so there's no way I could cover all of that in one video. But also I unfortunately don't have a copy of this volume myself. As far as I know these special bonus materials are rarely translated for release in English which is a real shame because believe you me, I would love a copy. I guess it's just another one of those moments that make me really wish that I could speak and read Japanese so that I don't have to miss out on all this One Piece goodness. Who wouldn't want to have an extra 180 pages focusing on Luffy's trusty lieutenants, Roronoa Zoro and Vinsmoke Sanji, the wings of the Pirate King? But because I don't have a copy myself, thank you to all the people of the internet who have sourced and translated the material so that we can now discuss it together. And I want to start by saying that this volume is actually so wholesome and so cute, but also simultaneously spicy and raunchy. Look at some of these illustrations. Tell me why this looks like a page taken out of a yaoi manga. They're literally half naked together, all oiled up and buff. Even this spread of the two, to me, just looks like the two have just had a lover's spat and Sanji is reeling him back in. Although I think in reality this is Sanji just scared that Zoro will get lost. But daydreams aside, as detectives, their fits are so slick. I'd happily read one shots of Zoro and Sanji as rival detectives in an alternate reality. It's kind of funny because even the interview between Nakai Kazuya-san and Hirata Hiroaki-san, the respective voice actors for Zoro and Sanji in the anime, included some pretty suggestive commentary. For example, when discussing that scene when Luffy and Zoro were discussing Sanji leaving for Whole Cake Island, Hiroaki's son says to Zoro, if you like him, just admit it. And I know he was probably just trying to get a rise out of Kazuya-san playing his part as Sanji because we have seen the voice actors get involved and play out their rivalry in real life. But in all seriousness, this volume did actually include some really wholesome details about the relationship between Zoro and Sanji. For example, did you notice that Sanji stopped calling Zoro Marimo or Mosshead for some time following the events at Thriller Bark? Or at least apparently only used that term sparingly? I never caught that. But this seems to have been an intentional choice by Oda because he wanted to portray Sanji as not wanting to start any fights with the post nothing happened badly injured Zoro, knowing that Zoro wouldn't want to show any weaknesses. I mean that is so wholesome. The volume also states the many various ways that the two acknowledge each other. For example, Zoro has complete trust in Sanji's cooking and will never interrupt him while he's cooking and he would also happily eat whatever Sanji serves him, even if there happen to be razors in the food. Whereas Sanji trusts Zoro with a lady's safety, which we know means a lot coming from Sanji, or even considers Zoro's dream worth more than his own life. 
Apparently, the magazine talks a fair bit about how Sanji was willing to give up his life to save Zoro and allow him to achieve his dream, as was shown through the events at Thriller Bark. And there seems to be lots more cute and fluffy details like this, but I think you get the drift. Hence, I am now convinced that everyone involved in the production of One Piece and the man himself, Echiro Oda, are all Zoro and Sanji shippers. It's just fans with their power scaling that gets in the way. But all that smushy stuff aside, there seems to be plenty of other interesting and funny details included in this magazine volume, many of which do actually go into their rivalry a little bit more. For example, the fact that Zoro is obsessed with being able to achieve double of whatever Sanji has. We've seen this in the series, such as when Zoro claims that he's worth 2,000 men because Luffy says that Sanji is worth 1,000 men at Zo. But did you notice that this character trait and this sort of jealousy is actually baked into their Wano aliases? Because Zoro Juro contains the character or Japanese word Ju, which means 10, whereas Sangoro includes the character Go, which is 5, 10 being the double of 5. And this is a detail that I completely missed during the Wano arc, but exactly the sort of detail that I love that Oda pays so much attention to when writing his series. But let me tell you some other stuff that was also included in the magazine. For starters, although this volume centered around Zoro and Sanji, it also included some other fun material. For example, this illustration by Oda of a young Kaido and Lin Lin which I absolutely adore. I mean, what a power couple. This was called a dream piece, meaning this is how Kaido and Big Mom appear in their youthful dreams about themselves. And this page is about to have me start shipping another couple. I'm also sure that somewhere people's brains are starting to tick madly speculating the parentage of Yamato. It's also worth noting that this volume began the serialization of the new One Piece novel, Zoro, meaning that readers would have been able to read the prologue chapter of a special series focusing on Zoro's past between the death of Kuina and his joining the Straw Hats. And in this first chapter, Zoro, a few years after Kuina's death, is on the search for a mysterious assassin in his village who's sneaking into other swordsmen's houses at night to kill them. A man rumored to be the Hawkeye's Mihawk. Although Zoro seems pretty unconvinced that this is truly the world's strongest swordsman himself. Anyways, this journey journey eventually leads him to leave the Shimotsuki village after defeating the Mihawk copycat killer, as Zoro is recognized by his old master Kushiro to have surpassed all other swordsmen in the area who could satisfy and challenge him, leaving us to wonder about what other sorts of adventure Zoro is going to get up to before we meet him at Shell Island. Now I do want to note that this story is not actually being written by Oda-san himself, written by Jun Esaka-san, who is probably best known for writing several of the Naruto light novels. She also wrote the One Piece novel Heroines, which focuses on the female protagonists of One Piece. It's not clear what, or if any, level of contribution Oda made or will make to this new Zoro novel, but that's not so unusual. For example, the special two-part Ace novel, which was also originally released via the One Piece magazines, weren't written by Oda. Although it is said that Oda did have a meeting with the authors of the Ace series where he gave them special ideas and permitted them to freely imagine Ace's personality. But this involvement for the Ace novels seemed to have been a special exception. And generally, all other novels serialized in the One Piece magazine are not considered to be strictly canonical. In fact, most of this magazine is not strictly canonical. Although some details like the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia section or the facts and details about Zoro and Sanji have have been obviously taken from the series. The interviews are between the voice actors or the figure skaters who played Zoro and Sanji in the show One Piece on Ice, episode of Arabasta, or the directors of the anime, and doesn't actually include a lot of commentary or input from Oda himself. Which at the end of the day, I guess is the spirit of these magazines, to provide supplementary material, rather than to continue or further develop the story in a substantial way. But I 
do think a lot of these details from the magazine still result in a lot more depth and warmth to these characters and their relationships. I mean, when I heard that volume 18 of the One Piece magazine was going to be focused on Zoro and Sanji, I was not expecting it to be this level of wholesome. But reading all of these details made me feel really warm and fuzzy inside. Makes me appreciate the Zoro and Sanji relationship in a new way, or at least makes me re-appreciate, I mean if that's a word, the relationship between Zoro and Sanji even more. It's also a good opportunity to cop really cool merch like the Zoro and Sanji motif stickers. The emojis used to represent each character are so adorable, so hilarious, as well as an awesome poster of the two in all their lover spats. Anyways, although I haven't had a chance to read through the whole magazine, I have loved finding out more information and also just getting the chance to delve back into this rivalry slash romantic relationship between Luffy's top two lieutenants. And it seems like we may get more of an opportunity to reminisce more about Zoro and Sanji because there will be special films released on the 13th of June, Zoro and Sanji's project videos, two films that will be broadcasted simultaneously. It's Zoro and Sanji season, baby, and I am here for it. But that's it from me today. Hope you've enjoyed listening. Hope you found all of this material as interesting as I did. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. You can also become a Patreon or channel member. And thank you to all of our current patrons and channel members for your support. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.